think it's gonna be another Harlem storm. Harlem. Yeah. Uh huh. Said you did it, but have you ever lived it? Say you could take a punch, but can you give it? Can you see shit and mind your business? Bullets flying, oh, that's how you living? See shit without snitching? Forget what you seen like old pictures? Can you take pain and not yell? Get your own you know, when you're in prison, you never know what's going to happen next. From minute to minute, from second to second. You're not prepared to go in there to fight with anybody, okay? You're going in there alone. You're going to do your time alone to the best of your ability, okay? I've seen two people get badly injured in prison. I've seen one get killed in prison. And it was a situation where, luckily, none of them were part of my crew. My crew consisted of only like maybe 10 females, okay? And I was like the second in command. I was not the first in command. The first in command was Chess, uh, who was now no longer with us, one of the street soldiers, R.I.P. Chess from Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. And she was in control, you know, she had backup. And I realized quickly, because she was my homie, I'm from Harlem, she was from Brooklyn, both from New York. And we're in prison with like, you know, people from all over the different states, all over the U.S., Puerto Rico, all over, Virgin Islands, you know, you name it, Midwest, you know. And we kind of, you know, coupled up in terms of a meeting of the minds. We thought a lot alike. Uh, she was military. So her getting in trouble, she had to be court-martialed and whatnot, and that's a federal offense. Bringing weapons across state lines is a federal offense, whether you're in the military or not. And I didn't know anything about that. You know, I was not weapon savvy at all. You know, I mean, the only weapons I had seen was like, you know, a two shot Derringer that you got to put uh, gunpowder in, you know, what they call a ball and cap. <laughs> pistol. That's the only thing I had seen up to that point, you know. And when you're around a lot of different people from different states, you got different mindsets and different expectations of behavior, how people are going to behave, how people respect each other. Now, me being from New York and, and you know, Chess being from, from Brooklyn, we got to get our respect, okay? 100% straight up. No BS, okay? You got to respect me. I will demand my respect, okay? Uh, we can't get along unless you respect me. That's first and foremost. Above anything else, I got to get my respect. I give respect, I want respect in return, okay? Um, but a lot of people don't think like that. They think I'm going to do what I want to do and, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do it to everybody I can run into and if, I'm going to do it to you too. And that means take your shit, steal your shit, come out of nowhere, you know, with some off-brand behavior, you know, that's going to tick you off. Uh, put hands on you, you know, which is, <laughs> that's not allowed. That's really not allowed, okay? Um, since I had backup and I had, you know, a, a crew, I had protection, 
You know, I had protection at all times, and I was willing to throw down for them just like they were willing to throw down for me. You know, now we didn't call it a formal gang, okay? We were just, you know, a bunch of females that they was my homies. Simple as that. They was my homies, and here we are in the middle of, uh, you know, bumfuck Egypt, West Virginia, you know, and for the first time for me, and you know, we had to survive. So that means basically you're going to have to be prepared for anything, number one. Number two, you're going to have to have some sort of a weapon, whether you have backup or not, because you travel by yourself, okay? And we weren't locked in cells, okay? This was like a college campus almost. There were buildings, we can come and go to different buildings and so forth, and then we had to be back at our particular compound, okay, for count, okay, which many times I've thrown off the count, okay, and they've gone looking for me with shotguns and, you know, station wagons, you know, because I was just that stupid. I was just, I was just, I just didn't give a damn. You know what I mean? I just did not care. Go look for me if you want. Okay, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? You know what I mean? So if you want to look for me, look for me. I'd be late getting back to my compound, getting back to my building, you know, and you got to stand like, you know, in your doorway, <laughs> right? You got to stand in your doorway like, you know, ready to be counted and whatnot. And I would be late. I would be late. I would be the type of person that if I was in the middle of a conversation or if somebody was saying something that was important to me, you know, I was going to stay until they finished. You know, if that meant an extra five minutes or ten minutes, well, so be it. And then it would take another ten minutes to walk across, you know, the field to get back to my building. Well, so be it. What the fuck? Let, them earn, let, let the correctional officers earn their money, you know, by looking at me, you know, by looking for me, rather. You know, I throw off the count, oh well, so what? No catastrophe, right? You do it like twice, you know, then they put you in solitary. And that was no big deal for me either, okay? I wrote, so, you know, two weeks there, three weeks, people, <laughs> people were more scared for me than I was for myself. That's how, that's how stupid and crazy I was, okay, to watch my own back, you know? So I say all that to say that you have to have a weapon of sorts, okay? To me, my go-to weapon, razor blade, bar none, okay? Um, I've seen people spit razors so fast, it make your head spin, okay? And the next thing you know, that person is sliced and diced, okay? Now, I wasn't a fighter. I was doing, you know, the whole, I'm not a fighter, and I certainly wasn't a lover because there was no men there, okay? So I was just dolo, you know, period, dolo. Minding my business, I mind my business. You mind your business, I give you respect, you give me respect, and everybody's a happy camper. Okay, so the first time I needed a weapon was some, somebody smacked me actually okay now the way i got it in to the facility was in the seam of my shirt actually i had a shirt and a jacket right so how you want to smuggle a weapon into prison is you want to take the seam of your shirt or jacket and just cut the seam with the razor put the razor inside of it and sew back the seam simple piece of cake okay therefore i always had my razor okay i know how to spit a razor yes did i want to risk putting it in my mouth playing games you know like you know with the noon chuckers with a razor blade you know Nunchaka style with a razor blade in my mouth? No. I wanted to have it on hand in my pocket. Okay? So that's how I got it in the facility. And then I would just carry it in my jeans. Okay? Because we had regular, we wore regular clothes. 
So this one particular day, I'm minding my business and didn't have any fights. I think maybe like three years had gone by and I didn't have any fights or anything like that, you know, because like I say, I, you know, I was kind of connected to a, a clique. So, you know, people kind of knew, like, don't mess around because, you know, she's got backup, okay? And this one particular chick just did not like me, you know? She was this big gay bull dagger and she thought she was God's gift. Her name was Spike, right? Can you believe that? Spike, and she had a big railroad spike, okay? tattooed in the middle of her chest and it was gold it was gold with black outline a railroad spike i kid you not it was like maybe nine inches long maybe two and a half three three inches wide spike wow okay so i didn't fear anybody you know all of a sudden i'm walking down you know I'm walking down the yard there and bang, a slap in the face, kapow, out of nowhere, out of nowhere. There was no argument, no nothing, totally spontaneous, a slap right in the grill, pow, okay? I immediately went in my pocket with these two fingers and the next thing you know, they were swiping and wiping, okay? The Carreza. We didn't call them Razor. We called them the Carreza, okay? And that Carreza was swinging. And she she didn't expect that of me because she was running really, really fast, okay? And I happened to have on slippers. So I had to kick the slippers off, run and chase her, okay? Now, <laughs> the Razor's gone. Now we're just hugging it out, okay, now we're punching it out, okay, and of course they broke it up, you know, all is well, all was good, okay, but the point is, you always must have some sort of weapon in prison, I don't care what anybody tells you, take it from me, Harlem Storm, trust me, better to have and not need, than need and not have, you feel me, okay, so how you get it in, you take the seams, seams of your pants, seams of your jacket, seams of your shirt, whatever. Put two or three of them bad boys in there because if they find one by luck or by chance, you got two more that you got in the seams. Cut the seam, slide the razor in, sew that bad boy back up. Nobody knows it's there but you, okay? This is Harlem Storm. It ain't all good, and it damn sure ain't all easy. Hit that like and subscribe button and the notification bell so you know the next time I do a real prison story from a female point of view. Peace till next time. This is Harlem Storm. Notice, no loitering. No peddling, no soliciting allowed in this building. Yes, that's true. But don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers too. Peace.